One of the biggest concerns for many of you with the new chip standard coming out is that your life and your smart home will be significantly impacted. And with new devices going to be certified in late 2021 and likely out in early 2022, the concern is real. So I'll be walking through what this new standard is and how it will impact all the things you have in your home today. And despite a number of people speaking about this in terms of doom and gloom, if you pay attention today, you might even find a few benefits. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by preparing you and your home for the future of the smart home. And as far as I'm concerned, that's my job and I take it pretty seriously. In order for me to kind of paint the picture here as to what impacts there will be and what impacts there won't, I have to walk through a bit of the technical mumbo jumbo here. So bear with me just for a little bit. I promise this will help as we go forward. The connected home over IP standard or the chip standard, if we can just kind of shorten things up there a bit, that is actually only one layer out of the four main layers that we see with wireless communication protocol these days and Zigbee and Z-Wave they fulfill all four of those layers and that has helped them to become very prominent in the smart home industry but chip is only created as that top layer and that's called the application layer this might initially seem like it's not going to do much however if you're trying to take this fragmented network of different standards and protocols and communication methods and you're trying to combine them into one, it's actually a really genius way to do it. The application layer handles more than you think though and of course whenever I hear that I think about the app and manufacturers will be able to still make their own apps but a lot of this is going to become standardized in terms of how it works. Maybe looks will still be different but how it works? should get pretty standardized. It also contains a great deal of information for how routing and security is managed. Plus it handles what is, I think the most important thing for many of us today, which is the data model. The data models here that are being used in the chip standard, they actually come from history a little bit. And a few years back, Thread and Zigbee, they started to work together as alliances and they created something called Dot Dot. And that included data models that were intended to help combine Thread and Zigbee. And that's exactly what they did. And that standard never went very far. We don't have a lot of Thread devices, but that's what's being used as chip. Now, what that data model means is the types of devices that we can have. And on initial release, this is gonna be pretty limited. It's not everything that you might have in your smart home today. It's a pretty good subset and it will be expanded over time. This was something that the committee was very clear will be worked on, but initially we only have a few devices. So those device types are lighting, blinds and shades, HVAC controls, so that's gonna mean your thermostats and air conditioning units, TVs, doors and door locks, safety and security, which will include quite a bit, and then controllers. Now, the most interesting one is actually something called bridges. Bridges will be how manufacturers, existing manufacturers that you have in your smart home, how they could actually update their device or their smart home hub to work with chip and to give you that bridge across those two systems. Speaking of which, you know what? It's easier for me to show you this. So let's walk through the actual network architecture of what chip will look like and then you'll see how that comes together. Note that we start with a controller and it connects to your Wi-Fi router and then anytime you're adding a new device, you're going to commission it, which is to set up or install it using Bluetooth from the controller to the new device. Then the device will join the Wi-Fi network and that Bluetooth connection will be dropped from the controller to your new device. You can attach all those different device types that we just talked about. They can all be attached through Wi-Fi through the same process that we just talked about and that is unless they are a thread device. 
And there are a few companies out there today that have thread border routers on their devices and it's important to know which companies have that because this is going to be the other connection point and I think we're going to see a lot of new thread devices. So number one you have Google and their Nest Hub second generation device, their Nest Hub Max that they released a while ago and the Google Nest Wi-Fi router, not the Google Wi-Fi router. This is the Nest one. Now, you also have Apple, which put out their HomePod Mini, and they have a brand new Apple TV 4K with Thread on board as well. So all of those companies are really well suited with a Thread border router on board. What's really interesting for those of you who have Samsung SmartThings, the V3 Samsung SmartThings hub has a Thread radio on board. It has not been certified for Thread as of yet, and I'm pretty sure, although I haven't seen the internals of one just yet, but that AOTech, the new AOTech one, should have the exact same board and the exact same components on it. So I'm expecting that to have a Thread radio as well. So all of these companies have been ready for this Thread component of the chip standard for a very long time. With 180 companies joining this working group or this alliance here for the chip standard, we're gonna see more companies do this. But Philips Hue a little while ago actually came out and said, our second generation bridge or hub that will work with the chip standard as well. Our bulbs are not getting updated to thread. They are gonna stay within Zigbee, but there's one of those bridge devices right there with Philips Hue. That's a great example where you're going to be able to use that with the chip standard, but the bulbs will stay within Zigbee. Let's get back to the diagram though. The thread devices will be managed by that thread border router and it will be connected to your Wi-Fi itself. Thread devices have an IP address and they are very fast and very secure within that network. Plus, there's other benefits for companies, especially initially when we don't have so many device types uh, available in the chip standard. I think there's a couple of reasons here for companies to actually create thread devices on their own and not necessarily have them as Wi-Fi versions. The next screen here describes the fact that the chip standard is not managing cloud connections and what that means to us as individuals and people with smart home is that this standard doesn't require cloud connections, it doesn't need it, and it's even not managing it. So companies will have to separately manage that. And what I'm hoping I'm hearing here, or what I hope I'm seeing is that there's been a pretty good focus on local home control, managed by controllers, managed by bridges, and just not requiring those cloud connections. Now here's where it gets interesting for those of you with a smart home hub that uses Zigbee or Z-Wave today. Because as I said, one of the device types is a bridge. This means that we could take any bridge today that was updated to be chip compatible. Then it could provide that connection to your existing devices and to you this wouldn't look any different than your chip devices because it would all be managed potentially in the same application. And a great example of that is going to be the Samsung's V3 Hub. I think it will be both a chip compatible controller and a bridge within that whole system. So that could be a really interesting device come just a little time. All the technical stuff aside, this means something to you, and actually it means a number of things. The first thing is that we will see the first certified devices come out in late 2021, or early 2022, and I think that's more likely. We're gonna see those certifications happen, some announcements within this year, but I think we're gonna push into 2022 before we start getting chip standard ready devices. This is just my insight into the industry. It's not necessarily the truth as we were told it or anything, but you know, Z-Wave, Zigbee devices, I think we're going to see less and less of those produced as we go forward. Zigbee still has a path and I think they will get integrated into this standard for sure. 
Z-Wave has a little bit more of an interesting story ahead of it. We'll see if it gets integrated, but there's also LoRa and Amazon Sidewalk to continue when we're talking about a standard that's more intended for long range communication. Uh, those standards could have an inside track actually within chip. So we'll have to see how that all shakes out with Z-Wave. The other thing that will probably drop off more and more as we go is things don't have to say works with Google. It's chip, it works with Google. Same with Apple HomeKit and with Amazon's voice assistant and Samsung SmartThings. They all have their own certification processes. I'm not sure those are going to be needed over the long term. So it will be really interesting to watch how that goes. I'm sure Apple will still want their own standard and their own logo. And I'm sure these guys, these big companies will still want that. But now it's not such a big deal because if it's chip, it works. Right now, when I get a new product in, number one, I have to evaluate what does it work with? And then I have to go, okay, now what features do I get with this? And then what features do I get with this? And are those different? And it's just a mess. And so in a lot of cases, when I review a product, it's as much about what it's compatible with as the features it has on board. And one of the things I am really looking forward to, and I think you should be, is that in the end, when we have one standard, each product will be evaluated on its features, its merits, its capability. We'll just be able to compare batteries to batteries or uh, features to features across the board. The other really exciting thing you should be hearing from all this is that right now, Every smart home hub on the market has an opportunity to go through this and become a bridge to this new standard. And that's really important. And I think you should be asking those companies right now, how are you preparing? Are you going to do this for me so that you can be ready to have that bridge device that takes your old smart home and keeps it working with your new smart home? One of the biggest things that has bothered me within the industry here for a while is that all of these different protocols and standards and these devices that are out there, they aren't necessarily getting all of the updates they need in terms of security. And we are moving into a world where there's maybe enough IoT products or smart home products where you know, some people might start to turn their attention towards those devices and the vulnerabilities that they have and start to attack them. I think we're kind of at that critical tipping point where they become really interesting as an attack point. And so when the word blockchain was uttered during this session that we had with the committee in charge of chip here, a lot of heads turned and a lot of people got really excited about the security aspect of this new chip standard. Now, I don't have a lot of details about this, but when I hear that and I hear that being implemented, I know we're talking about cutting edge and they're trying to address one of these critical aspects with the existing standards and the existing set of devices on the market. While security is important, it's a pretty deep topic and it's tough to understand, but you know what isn't that hard to understand and would prepare you for what's coming here? Well, that's buying the right products. And I think it's pretty clear here from what I've been talking about today that I've been trying to steer you to the right set of products that had a future within this new standard. So what I did is I created a playlist of devices, products, solutions that will be ready for chip. These will be devices that you can use within the new standard, within the new smart home as we go forward. So go ahead, check that out. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching today. And of course, don't hate, automate.